I'm still Jeremy Corbett, quite enjoying it. And I, like you, live in a world full of unavoidable current events. We can't make them go away, so let's make some jokes about them, shall we? <laughs> Tonight we have six of the best comedians in New Zealand and Australia who haven't blocked my phone number. <laughs> let's meet them, shall we? In leading team one, well, his mum just became a dame in New Zealand, so please welcome Damette Die, Prince Duffy <laughs> of Henwood. How's your week been? Oh, I've had a phenomenal week, Jeremy, because, I mean, uh, even though we're in tough times at the moment, inflation's through the roof, cost of living, the crypto's having a dead cat bounce <laughs> moment, you know, so I'm getting into farming. I don't know if I want to hear more of that story or not. I'm farming ladybirds. Uh, OK, we're hearing it. <laughs> ladybirds? Yeah. For what reason? Well, because they can produce pheromones, right? Right. So I'm going to make a perfume, mm -hmm. right, that when people smell it, they think I'm buff. <laughs> so, like, they smell it and look at me and go, wow, he's, that's he's the rock buff. with hair. I would love to find out more, but there are people sitting hey, so next I'll to tell you. Who's you your team? More. No, I'll tell you some okay. more. <laughs> Can I change teams? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, just uh, before, before we get Petter onto this, yeah. Yeah. I'm ethically farming these ladybirds. OK. Like, you need one metre square for each bird. Oh. And, <laughs> quick fact, ladybirds are the only bird that isn't a bird. It's, wow. it's an insect. Right. Now... Who's on your team, Di? So you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> Next to me, I have two people who look like they went to a school ball in the sand skyline. <laughs> Give it up for Lana Walters and Harley Breen! <laughs> All right, over on team two, actor, writer, musician, comedian, director. Just some of the roles she's refused to let me do on any of her projects. <laughs> <It's Mala Sami. laughs> Madeline, welcome to the show. Should I say welcome back? How's the week been? Yeah, it's been pretty good. Yeah, I've what? spent a, spent a fair bit of the time um, in another country, but yeah. Your voice sounds a bit Australian. No, no. I, not at all. I mean, I've spent a fair bit of time there, but I think you'll find, like, Bonds a ripper. I haven't changed it. <laughs> Can you Just, tell us what you've been doing or not? Yeah, I've it. been shooting a um, TV show in Tasmania. Oh, wow. Australia, yeah. So I've just come back with a bit of an accent and I'm a bit racist now. <laughs> You're well, welcome. Um, <laughs> I learn from the best. Might be an awkward intro for your team, but let's do it anyway. Uh, yeah, let's well, do. hey, listen, I've got a, we've got a great team today. Uh, we're brown. We're proud. And, in fact, the best tag team wrestling champions <laughs> since the Bushwhackers. Please welcome Angela Dravid and Benjamin Hurley. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start things off, shall we, with a round of newsmakers, as per, where I show our team some juicy images from the week's headlines. They tell me why they're newsworthy. And Team One, you're up first. Why is this picture in the news, please? Oh, uh, police embrace bring your mum to work day. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, a, it's the, a very poorly attended protest. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a new show called Police 10 Foot 7. <laughs> This is, uh, Jeremy, this is... Police are now working with different communities, tall community and short community, <laughs> to, ra to raise awareness between the two so they can hopefully meet in the middle. Well, as much as we laugh, and that sounds unlikely, it is wrong. Um, <laughs> that is Hamilton Mayor Paula Southgate announcing how Hamilton is on track to become the safest city in New Zealand. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Don't laugh. They've formed the Safer City Task Force, which is a collaboration between council, police and community organisations, and they've invited the new police minister, Chris Hipkins, to visit. Uh, Hamilton also claims it hasn't suffered from ram raids like Auckland has. Of course, the trick there is to make sure all the glass in your storefronts is already broken. <laughs> well done, Hamilton. So what's, the, what's their slogan now? Hamilton, our assault rates are a little bit lower. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the great thing if you want to improve, like, start from a really bad benchmark to begin with. That's the secret. But then, didn't their old slogan used to be something like, Hamilton, um, don't judge us, don't, like, know us before you judge us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they moved on from like better than you'd expect. <laughs> well, I came out last year and did my hotel quarantine in Hamilton, um, and it happened to be in a motor inn right beside a gun range. So I felt very safe. Did <laughs> <laughs> it say gun range or gang house? No, no, no. There's a range of guns out there. <laughs> <laughs> so are they doing this through surveillance? Because they don't have a police helicopter in Hamilton. It's just a pigeon with a GoPro duck. Yeah. <laughs> 
But with the streets being the safest they've ever been, it's a great time to get out and experience all that Hamilton has to offer. Um, the gardens. <laughs> <laughs> There's a river, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, the river. Yeah, yep. I wouldn't. Longest river in New Zealand, isn't it? Yeah, Waikato River is the longest river in New Zealand. And a little added extra, you ever swim in that, come out, you glow in the dark. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I heard to keep Hamilton safer, they've now started selling tinnies in childproof containers. <laughs> it's the only city in the country without fluoride in the water. Did you know that? Wow. No. Yeah, the only, only one in the country, and that explains a lot of the toothlessness. <laughs> yeah, toothlessness. <laughs> that, oh, that and the methamphetamines, <laughs> yeah. Hey, on the fluoride issue, yes. have you thought about working with the headhunters or something to put fluoride in the meth? Because <laughs> uh, you might fix a few issues there. Yeah. I, I do love your attitude here in New Zealand. Like, I, I, in Australia, if we had a town like Hamilton, it would be a national treasure. But here it's like, yeah, it's a bit shit. Wow. Why would it be a national treasure? Because it's a beautiful place. See? <laughs> See the stunned silence from the whole of New like, Zealand. Honestly, going, the what? only thing we do better than New Zealand is shit towns. You guys have got no idea what a shit town is. So we'll continue. Okay. <laughs> Team two, over to you now. Here's a picture for you from the news. Why is it newsworthy? Aww. Just mm. two sad guys can't find any jib. That's the one. This guy's like. Look at my invisible sandwich. And he's like, God damn it, Daryl, I hate improv. <laughs> <laughs> they look like they're really, like, I don't know, they look like they're in a really deep conversation. Yeah, they're deep like... Deep philosophical chat about yeah. something. Yeah, they're kind of going like, I see you're wearing high vis, but I don't see you. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I feel like there was something in the news recently about... Like a change, a builders are kind of changing philosophically. Yeah, you're sort of right there. Builders, they are a changing. A study released in the UK this week revealed three quarters of builders are comfortable discussing feelings, half are history buffs, and one fifth are lovers of art. British tabloids reacted in that British tabloid way by accusing the building industry of going woke. <laughs> but I have actually noticed this change. Builders have a lot of really progressive views now. Uh, for example, they now think racism is super gay. <laughs> Imagine that, eh, these new age builders, like, it's time for smoke, oh boys, right! Who bought the oat milk today? <laughs> see, I mean, I don't mind if builders are going woke, if it means that they are, uh, you know, maybe um, if I have to see their bum crack, it's mm. pro properly moisturised and potentially waxed. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine you go to building site, they're like, this is Lazar, we call him Lazar. Do you know why we call him Lazar? Because he's a Libra. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who the first woke builder was? It was Jesus. Yeah. Oh. Ah. He was always on about, you know, try my organic wine. <laughs> he, he did the mistake of nailing himself to the house he was working with. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised how easy that is. Yeah. Yeah. My brother did that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so do they, they have a new song like Bob the Builder? Bob the Builder, can we fix it? <laughs> well, you can never actually fix trauma. <laughs> <laughs> it's more about growing and fostering it's connections with yeah. others. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like this idea of, too, like, being on a, on a woke building site and someone, like, you know, smacks their thumb with a hammer and instead of, like, screaming out in pain and swearing, someone's like, Tyler, use your words, mate. <laughs> right? Use your words. I won't have that profanity. <laughs> well, I've, got, I've got daughters. That is Newsmakers. Uh, well, let's do scores. Uh, team 1, you can have 21-7. The score of the Crusaders Blues match from the weekend. Not sure who won. Don't really follow Rugby Union. Uh, <laughs> and Team 2, you can have the number of votes National Sam Uffendale received in the Tauranga by-election, 10,931. Not much for an electoral roll of 50,000, but enough to give him the win and to give Team 2 a star. Well done. <laughs> OK, time now to take a look at what we are playing for this week. Please join me in either ooing or ahhing, your choice, at this week's prize. That's your cue. It's a full set of hard hats for the modern woke builder to proudly display their gender pronouns on the building site. Nice. All right, time now on Seven Days for a game of history where we uh, take a look back to an iconic time in our nation's past and meet one of the people involved. This week, we're peering into the wacky world of radio promos. The rules for the 10 contestants in New Zealand's biggest living billboard. 
with we had to live in an area 1.2 by 2 metres. Ten contestants being chosen out of hundreds of applications and today is the big day. The first ever living billboard competition in New Zealand history. Ultimately it's just a waiting game when nine get down and the tenth remains that tenth person will be handed a cheque for $20,000. To win the $20,000 cash you must remain within your area for the longest time. We see the first in a long line of soft people. Our front yard car park attracted all walks of life and became the burnout centre of Auckland. But the pressure was on and someone had to crack. The strain on Linda proved too much and the first disqualification. Bye -bye. <laughs> See you later. Going really drunk. I've been living on the ledge for 164 days, but they need not stay here any longer. We have checked out the three remaining guests at Hotel Hauraki, each with a cheque for $20,000. <laughs> Great stuff. Yes, four radio stations were marrying off nudists and importing Russian wives for lucky listeners. Uh, there was life on the ledge. And with us today, we have Linda from that clip who was eliminated more than 80 days into the competition. Along with Linda, we also have an artist, a lecturer and a tortoise researcher. But you need to be human researchers now, Team One, and identify Linda from our lineup. Oh my gosh, who is crazy enough to do this? So this is someone who is willing to sit for hours in the elements, completely bored, so they must be a cricket fan. <laughs> oh, this is a big question, Jeremy. I don't know if you're allowed to answer it legally. Linda with a Y or an I? Uh, I have Linda with an A, L-I-N-D-A. <laughs> Like L Y N or yeah, L I. Yeah, I just spelt it out. L I N D A. Okay, so it's an I. It's definitely yeah. for. Oh, that makes now, it yeah, yeah, different. Yeah. I have some other info for the tortoise researcher. Tortoises have crazy orgasms. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm serious. So as soon as she... yeah, I can vouch for that. I'm part tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as she hears the noise, she's going to react. Oh, is that what the phrase coming out of your shell it means? <laughs> You are dismissed for the rest of the show. You can go home. That was brilliant. It's amazing. So, <clears throat> I think the noise is something like this. It's like... <coughs> yeah, number four. OK, I think number four is Linda. And I think number one is the artist. I, I think number that. three is the lecturer. And number two is a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We will lock in number four as Linda, three <laughs> as the lecturer, two, tortoise tor 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 <laughs> expert, and number one, the other thing. All right, that is good. <laughs> yeah, the artist. The artist. Okay, you've locked in Linda from our radio promo as number four. Team two, your turn. Who do we think Linda is? Who yeah, do you Linda. think has the, the, the wherewithal? to live on a billboard and for 80 days. No. I feel like it's number four. You yeah, that's, like what number they, yeah. that's what they said. She's very well. poised. Yeah. Number two has uh, tattoos on her neck. Um, it might be one or it might be two. Um, I can't see what they are. Can you just, could you just show? Oh, yes. Oh, Is that... Scorpion. Oh, yes, the spicy tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yep. le le do we think lecture three? We yep. think Linda four, the same Linda as the Oh, right. but I mean number two and, and an number artist one. with a tattoo, which is, was our first instinct. One and two. I reckon yeah. she's a tattoo artist and she tattooed herself. Oh, totally. She just got the gun out one night after a few gins and went eeeh. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's so, she's so poor from being an artist that she had to steal and she went to prison and that's where she got that tat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just got out like yeah, last week exactly. and she's like, yeah, I want to come scorpion. on seven yeah. days, the show that I watched. She's like, really? When I was in jail. I do love how time. people who are technically in the arts, you have a very low opinion of an artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so, that's a all right, okay. So we'll lock, in, we'll lock in four is Linda. Linda, yep. Three yeah. is our lecturer. Yeah. Two is our artist, and right. number one is our tortoise. All right. <laughs> so, team two, you think Linda is number four. Team one, you also think Linda is number four. Can Correct. I ask Linda from Living on the Ledge in 1996 to step forward, please? <laughs> What made you go and live on a, a billboard? 
Something along the lines of twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say, and, and it's a great house deposit. I've got to say. Was it? It, it actually it was. was about back then. What was that like in that time where you could buy a house for only a hundred and twenty thousand dollars? It was like, okay, it's just uh, a couple of weeks down the track for me. Oh yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> well, I bought about four. Yeah. Um, well, and <laughs> uh, Linda, just talk us through how you did get eliminated. When you're, you're always, you're always under a lot of pressure. You've got a lot of people coming through, a lot of visitors, so you do lose a bit of um, concentration. And I did. I, I actually left something in my pocket that I shouldn't have because you're not allowed to have certain things. So this so, is like the original Squid Game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. You were very good when they said you're out after 81 days. You said fair, fair call. Yeah, I did actually. Um, why make a song and a dance of it? I did make a song. Actually, it was called Hotel Haraki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, musician, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I wrote a song while I was up there. So um, they actually used that on radio uh, for a good part of six weeks, I think. Would they pay so, you twenty grand? <laughs> did you follow them uh, after you left? Because it got it turned, didn't it? The public suddenly became on the side of the competitors against Radio Hauraki and told them they should pay them all out. They lasted uh, 100 and... 164 days. It was 164 wow. days, yeah. That's... That was amazing. And three of them got, got paid got out to. the 20 grand. If you hadn't have been disqualified, do you reckon you could have made 164 days? I would have given it a damn good yeah. go. Yeah. I would have done that for my daughter. Ed. Would you do it again? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Give it up for Linda Bahaja. Yeah. yeah. Point. So you both got four, so you're both in the running. Can I ask our lecturer to step forward, please? Oh! oh! Yes, you it. No, you didn't. You both got that wrong. You both no, we said three. she was the lecturer. It's we down to this. You weren't paying attention. <laughs> Just for die. Can I ask our tortoise researcher to step forward, please? Oh! Yeah. <laughs> which leaves oh, an artist. Yeah. If you'd like to step forward, the artist is number two, which gives the score. Let's be frank, America is a messed up place, but we can at least thank them for electricity. It's a pretty useful invention, and it's even better when you don't pay for it. So if you want some on the house, caption this photo and text your caption along with your name to 4088. Our favourite caption wins $500 of Frank Energy credit. You can take another look at the photo on our Seven Days Facebook page, and we will announce our winner toward the end of tonight's very show. Well, would you look at that? Time for a break. Make sure you slap on some sunscreen, though. We'll be back with a round of Club Topicana on Seven Days. <laughs> change out of your undies under a towel so nobody can see because we're off to the beach. Play the steel drums. Yeah, you guessed it. It's time for Club Topicana. Let's head on down to the sand. Once again, a massive thank you to our sponsor and pineapple provider, the good people at Dole. The fruit's so good it made Beyonce sing, if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. She was, of course, talking about a ham steak and a ring of pineapple. <laughs> Inside this Dole pineapple rich in vitamin B, I have some stories from the week I'd like to hear a little more about. So let's get into it. Uh, okay, this is a resort in Mallorca in Spain announced this week it would combat drunken behaviour from guests by banning not booze, but football jerseys. The gang patch, if you will, of the binge drinking world. So what I'm looking for is more examples of bad tourists, please. Bad tourists. Uh, oh, bloody everyone here is on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just stay home. <laughs> Okay, we're, we're row 20, love. Okay, one. Two. <laughs> no, we're row 20, love. <laughs> uh, yeah, hold on. Three. <laughs> four. They're, they're fucking going order, mate! Uh, no, 20 we are. It's five. <laughs> oh, is it five on that side? Yeah, five on that side, too. <laughs> that so I'm not like punch you. <laughs> I think it's a real life Maori. He's not wearing a skirt. Do the tongue thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I bloody swear it was just a boogie board when I left Australia. <laughs> oh, just, oh, sorry, just getting into the character. The oh, bloody structural integrity of this coral reef's appalling. <laughs> Crumbling under my feet. 
Oh, jeez, bloody hell, the Ukraine's really let itself go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the pineapple for our next story. Oh, this is about uh, a New Zealand-based non-profit partnering with tech companies this week in an attempt to reintegrate ex-prisoners into society by training them as IT professionals. <laughs> it's an interesting mix. So I'd like to hear some things I've heard on the Prisoner Tech Support Hotline. Oh, have you tried turning the electric chair on and off again? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, was that? You're struggling to find your photos of your kids? <laughs> your, your kids? <laughs> Just making sure that you're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me know, have you got windows? Oh, great. Oh, that must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, to exit, you just have to press escape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, was that what you got? What model? Oh, the new one. Oh, yeah. That's Flash. What's your address? <laughs> <laughs> Our next story is about a mother-in-law who caught some heat online after her son's wife claimed she had faced aggressive demands to have a gender reveal party against her will. What I want to hear is some things you shouldn't say when meeting your in-laws. <clears throat> no, 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 hear me out, hear me out. You know, like, of all the girls at the orgy, I picked your princess. Ah! Well, she calls me daddy too. <laughs> oh, g'day there. Oh, okay, so this is what she's gonna look like when she's older. <laughs> oh. Grim. <laughs> I've heard so much about you, mostly in therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, we are hoping to buy a house. Um, do you guys think you're going to live much longer? Or... <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Mr. Cousin Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's lovely to meet you, Mr. Henderson. You seem like a happy man, and uh, you know, if your wife's got the same appetites as Rachel, I can see why, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to our last story now, and this is uh, The Block. TV show announced the cast of its new season this week, which will see previous season's losers have another go uh, in search of redemption. A formula I think will work. I can see why they're making it. But what I want to hear from the teams, please, is rejected reality TV shows. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to Naked Attraction Senior Edition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, Jeremy Corbett. <laughs> This week on Survivor Westfield Car Park. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I was on level two. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> Piha couldn't be rescued. Floating bodies every Tuesday. <laughs> Tonight, guys, it's getting slippery, it's getting wet. Welcome back to Lube Island. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch it. Welcome to Sister Wives of Gloria Vale. <laughs> it's a radio show. Tonight, we take ten comedians who are desperate to get on seven days and see what they'll do to do it. <laughs> I'm your host, Jeremy Corbett. <laughs> Zip. <laughs> That'll do us. Play the steel drums one more time. Great work. Okay, scores for Club Top Account Team One. You can have 27. That's Thank the you. number of years Internet Explorer was in service before it was finally ditched by Microsoft this week. And Team Two, you can have six. The number of years since Beyonce dropped a new album. She's just announced a new one out next month called Renaissance. I believe the single was released yesterday yes. called Break My Soul. Congratulations goes to Team One. Thank you very much. We're going to take a break now. Don't turn off your telly, though. We'll be right back with a round of My Kid Can Draw That on 7 Days. Everyone's a critic these days. No, seriously. Send your frank feedback about 7 Days to this email address. Stay tuned for how we use it. Could be a laugh.
time for a game of my kid could draw that where we use child labour to create some beautiful pictures of the week's news. Our teams have to right. guess what is depicted in this week's drawings come from Arahoi School in New Lynn. Thank you, Arahoi School. Team one, let's take a look at yours, shall we? What is the kid drawn here? Hello, my name is Ruben. I go to Arahoi Primary School and this is my picture. Oh, oh, look that is at an him. awesome picture, Ruben. But look at this, the, the endless battle between night and day. <laughs> this is a design for the new Australian flag. <laughs> uh, what, what are these in the, star, in the sky? Stars? Kinners. Kinner, yeah, it does look like a kinner, eh? I think the dominant thing are these stars. Yeah. Hold on, let me um, count. In your own time. <laughs> There's nine stars. That could be Subaru, which Subaru. is Japanese for Matariki. <laughs> That's why the Subaru logo has the Are stars. Are you saying on. Subaru? Subaru the car. Yeah, no, I know Subaru. Yeah. You... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm saying it like you would say it if, if you... you were Japanese. Yeah. And you're not. And you're saying, no, no. You're saying it like you pronounce kangaroo. <laughs> yeah, kangaroo. <laughs> yeah, but Subaru is, um... Oh, fool. <laughs> Kangaroo. Uh, yeah, well, OK, back in Subaru. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, that I is fucking say... racist little hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> so, nine stars. Got to have something to do with Matariki. This Friday. This Friday. I don't know how the rest of the picture ties in. Excuse uh, my ignorance. Uh, but it seems to match yours. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, Matariki? Well, much like as Australia, um, <laughs> we have quite a respect for the indigenous oh. culture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matariki is uh, a public holiday that we're now um, recognising. It's like the Māori New Year. Oh, OK, right. Our time to reflect on the previous year with your friends and family. Right. But it's not all bad. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you get a day off. <laughs> this is all about Matariki. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? All right, Ruben, uh, what have you drawn for us, please? My picture is about Matariki. I've drawn the Matariki stars, the shiny yellow bright. Next to the house I've drawn people eating Matariki breakfast. They're drinking hot chocolate. The people sliding down the hill are wanting to catch a Matariki star. This year we get to have a day off on Matariki. I'm hoping on Matariki I get to run around. And this is my picture. <laughs> Yes, Matariki is officially here uh, as Aotearoa readies itself to formally observe the Māori New, Year's e New Year for the first time. Cultural advisors are warning business to avoid commercialising the holiday. And I think the commercialisation has already gone too far. Earlier this year, I was in the supermarket and they had kumara out on display and I thought, already? It's only February, you know? <laughs> like Easter all over again. So yeah, this is Matariki, it's the nine stars of Matariki. Yeah, I mean, we need to remember what it's all about. It's about love, it's about family, it's about 30% off Manchester at Briscoe's. Yeah. Um, it, is, it is the difference between the Māori New Year and the Pākehā New Year. The Māori New Year is all about family and coming together. And the Pākehā New Year is all, all about trying to start a family with someone you've just met on that Monday. <laughs> Well, given that Matariki is a, a, a uniquely New Zealand thing, as soon as it becomes really good, we'll take it. <laughs> I think we just have to appreciate Matariki while it's here, while Jacinda is leader, because, you know, if Chris Luxon gets in, it's going to be Kudu Club Christmas. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be new. Yeah. about New Year, right? Yeah. yeah. So I sort of feel like we'll probably have um, Christmas in the park, but it's Matariki in the park, and this time there'll be nine stars, which is three more than last year. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that one's, that one's Ben Lummis. <laughs> oh, it's you can also see... <laughs> oh my God, it faded so fast. <laughs> you can see um, Matariki, the constellation in the early morning sky. Also, at the moment, uh, you can see five planets up there as well. Mercury, Venus, uh, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn all in a line in the mornings. Get up early and see that. All right, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you a story. <laughs> this earpiece connects to uh, my producer in the other room and he just said... F nerd. <laughs>
Such a supportive it... country. <laughs> <laughs> All right, team two, are you ready for a drawing? Sure. Yeah. All right, a good one for you. What is our kid drawn here, please? Hi, my name is Samara. I go to Arahoy School Primary, and this is my picture. So we've got, um, it looks like a table with some viruses on it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, and, there's uh, like a little, uh, it's either a naked person or a dog. It says waff waff. Oh, next oh, waff, to waff. The, maybe it needs a, um, <laughs> needs waff. a waff. Yeah. yeah. Next to the box of sanitary pads. That yeah. says te 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 te. It's got waff waff te te te. Maybe it's beatboxing. <laughs> but also in the corner here it says fire alarm on on. Oh. Maybe oh, that's fire! And this is smoke. That's fire, oh. and that's smoke. So that's a fire. Is that a stove? <laughs> that's a stove. That's a stove. We've got a dog, we've got a stove, we've got some fire. Do you hear the story about the dog almost burning down the house by turning on the stove? And the house got feel like, <laughs> Is there a punchline? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear it on one of That's genuinely a story that happened in the news in the last seven days. Yep. Should we check with Samara? What have you drawn, Samara, please? My picture is about a dog setting fire to a house. He turned on the stove and the flame became to a fire. These are the flames and the fire alarm is here and it got on and then it, it started to beep. It was like beep, 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 beep. And then the dog here was barking because he didn't know what was going on. And I think it was very scary. And this is my picture. That's beautiful, Samara. <laughs> yeah, it's been big news to make it on this show. A dog in Parkville, Missouri made headlines this week after almost burning the house down while his owners were out. Security camera footage revealed the dog activated the uh, stove top, which was touch start, while trying to get his paws into a pan full of grease. And uh, dogs, they're just... They're always up to this stuff. Like the other week, I was out for the afternoon and the dog messed up my bed, lit all the candles, threw my wife's clothes and the gardener's clothes all over the floor. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? <laughs> Bloody wow. dog, eh? I know. Wonder what style. Uh, anyway, um... <laughs> I believe, I believe this is the dog, Oh, um, oh. which is unusual because normally fires like this are started by labs, like uh, golden labs, uh, black labs, uh, meth labs. <laughs> 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 uh, do you want to you wanna actually see? Well, I think we've got some video oh, yeah. of oh, really? the security okay, footage here. Oh, my God. Where's the dog? Oh, it's by the stove there <gasps> on the right. Oh, oh it's an idiot. What the heck? <laughs> And then it's going, yeah, there's an open box of dog food on the table. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. oh yes! Oh. So he lit it and it just went woof. <laughs> oh. I hope, dog is I out hope of the there. owners didn't rub his nose in it so he didn't do it again. I reckon with a dog it is an accident. Like if that video was of a cat, that would be deliberate. You'd see the cat looking at the camera going, yeah. <laughs> Standing, and you'd be standing outside your house burning to the ground, it would still be rubbing its stuff <laughs> yeah. in your feet, going... Yeah. The, the cat would be getting its other cat friend to take a photo of it doing like that, uh, like a copycat thing of that copycat thing of that meme, you know, the meme with the girl with the fire in the background. <laughs> I don't have a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Arahoy School, Samara and Ruben. Give them a round of applause. Thank you for being our artist. Wonderful drawings. Team 1, you can have the daylight hours in New Zealand on Tuesday, shortest day of the year down this neck of the woods. Depends where you are in Aotearoa, whether you're at the top or the bottom, but the bottom, the shortest, about 8 hours, 35 minutes. And uh, you can have 300, which is for 300 kilograms, which is the weight of the world's largest freshwater fish, giant stingray found in Cambodia this week, 300 kgs, two and a half of me. Congratulations to the big fat star for Team 2! Yeah. It is time for you to make yourself a cup of tea or one and a half cups of two minute noodles. We'll be back in three minutes with a round of Quiz Story Never Repeats on Seven Days. <laughs> Pretty clear by now our panellists really know their stuff when it comes to current events, but are they so smart when it comes to not current events? Well, let's find out with a round of Quiz Tree Never Repeats. It is trivia time, teams. Get your whiteboards ready. We're going way back now, 1868. And what new invention revolutionised office life? In 1868, the UK Parliament passed the Capital Punishment Amendment Act, ending public hangings in the UK in 1868. Uh, New Zealand officially adopted a standard time zone to be observed by the entire country. Not sure what you're doing before that. 
The book Little Woman was published in America. The top song of the year, of course, was Who Let the Dogs Out by the Baha Men. <laughs> Die, 1868, what invention revolutionised office life? Cocaine. <laughs> It felt like a lot more things were being done, but really they weren't. Yeah. yeah. Lana, on this week in 1868, what invention revolutionised office life? Was it passive-aggressive post-it notes? <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were a bit later. They were more like they're in your 2000s, those. Harley? I think we'd all agree this is the greatest drawing ever of a water cooler. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, that's what was invented in 1868. It's and and, it's, and it, up until then, no conversation had ever happened at the office. No. <laughs> On this week in 1868, what invention revolutionised office life? The steam-powered stapler. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love it. I wish there was such a thing, the old Steely Dan. It would be wonderful. No, not the answer I have. Angela? Toilet breaks. <laughs> Before they just had to soil themselves. Yeah. Well, they still do at Amazon. <laughs> yeah, they've taken them away now. Mm. They, I'm not sure. When was that revolution, the toilet break revolution? Not sure. It's not the answer I have. Mads, you ready? Oh, uh, look, I, I, I haven't done all the keys, but I reckon it was that. Oh. Correct. It was the typewriter. Oh. The invention of the typewriter. So the invention of the typewriter happened in 1868. The first typewriter was operated by pedals and mounted on a sewing machine stand. Oh, the typewriter mini released the year after was slightly smaller, but at the expense of no headphone jack. <laughs> right, clean those boards. We're moving on to our next one. We're going to 2018, relatively recent history. On this week in 2018, who was rescued? This week in 2018, who was rescued? Uh, 2018, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry got married in Windsor Castle. Of course, no. it's been heavily, happily ever after, ever since for them. <laughs> Simpsons became the longest-running primetime series on US TV, uh, aired its 636th episode. Quite incredible. Bill English resigned uh, from his position as leader of the National Party to re be replaced by Simon Bridges, who had great hopes, and I hope they get realised. <laughs> what do you have, Madeline? Um, yeah, just all women from Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, good answer. Not the one I have, though. Come to Angela. Who was rescued? Everyone who died before COVID was a thing. <laughs> Not sure it's the defini definition of rescued, but I suppose they were saved in some way, yeah. Ben Hurley? Oh, yep. Yeah. I know what it is. Who was rescued on this week in was, 2018? They were rescued and they were never an issue again. <laughs> the Warriors. <laughs> Top eight, knocked out in the first round, 2018. I knew you'd know. All too hard. All right, Di, what about you? What do you think? Who was rescued in 2018? A gymnastics team from Corbett's basement. <laughs> <laughs> wow. yeah. Not a pedophile for the record. Uh, um, I never even accused you, but... <laughs> <laughs> you say what you think you need to say, my man. Uh, 2018. <laughs> Lana, what do you have? I saved myself from a relationship with a fuck boy. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> And he might have broke up with me, but, I mean, I wanted to. <laughs> 2018, on this weekend, 2018, who was rescued, Harley? Uh, those soccer kids that took a dive. And Correct, oh, the yeah. soccer kids Stuck were rescued. Coat. Well done. Oh. It was a Thai junior soccer team. Guess. Twelve young boys and their coach were saved from the uh, Tamrang Cave in northern Thailand by an international rescue team of divers. And while some applauded the divers, I personally think we need to keep diving out of soccer. So it's just mm. my personal <laughs> I, um, I watch that doco. It's amazing. What's that? Yeah, they get stuck in the cave and then they get rescued. <laughs> uh, <what? laughs> I think I'd be good in a cave. I got stuck in a closet for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm out now, in fact. Uh, <laughs> And amazing at diving, from what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, pay attention. You need to stay tuned in this next break because we'll uh, be announcing the winner of this week's Frank Energy Voucher, and I hope that it's you. We're off for a very short time. See you soon, though, for Beat the Ding on Seven Days. Yeah. challenge our panellists to make lists related to the news. It's stressful for them and apparently not at all fun to do, which makes it a lot more fun for us to watch. All right, here we go. Oh, Let's get God. dinging. Oh. Our first story, Sam Neill was given a new role this week. He'll be playing Sir Sam Neill after he was awarded the title Knight Companion of the Order of New Zealand. I assume it was all down to his role in Jurassic Park. So, Madeline, you have 15 seconds to name seven types of dinosaur. Go. Uh, Tyrannosaurus, Stegosaurus, um, Diplodocus, 
um, uh, a pterodactyl, uh, 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 the velociraptor. Uh, but donka donk donk. <laughs> the donka donk donk. Yeah, the badonka donk donkasaurus. It's like got a big old trunk in the back. All right, uh, we asked for seven. You only got five. All right, we move on. Yes. Singer Kate Bush made history this week after her song "Running Up That Hill" reached number one in the UK 37 years after it was released. That's all thanks to its use in the TV show Stranger Things. Lana, you have 12 seconds. Wait to name four famous Kates. And two famous bushes. Go. <laughs> um, Kate Blanchett, um, Kate Middleton, um, Kate Moss, Kate Bosworth, and what, what was the two other? Two bushes. One? To, uh, George Bush, uh, George W. Bush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A star for yeah. Lana. Well done, yeah. Team One. Yeah. Very good. I thought you were going to go burning bush or something like that, but no. Yeah. Pulled it through. Yeah. Great stuff. <laughs> Thanks. This week, Tom Hanks made headlines after over-eager fans accidentally pushed his wife over, causing him to let off some uncharacteristic F-bombs. Ben, you have 12 seconds to name, wait for it, six Tom Hanks movies, but you have to do it in a Forrest Gump voice. <laughs> well, uh, Forrest Gump, uh, Big, uh, uh, the, the one where he puts the plane in the water, uh, uh, Philadelphia, uh, 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 Toy Story 1, 2, 3, 4... <laughs> <laughs> that was a found a rich vein in the end that saved you. It was very good. Uh, can I just dispute somebody? Yep. Movies are right, but he just sounded like a guy in a Bunnings warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we move on. This week, a cocaine shipment worth $83 million was accidentally delivered to a Czech supermarket. <laughs> Good time to go and get your groceries. Harley, you have 12 oh. seconds to give me five street names for cocaine. Oh, uh, um, a bag of confidence, um, <laughs> uh, powder, uh, uh, shit. Um, I just call it cocaine. Um, yep, that'll do. Uh, expensive, um, <laughs> angel dust, um, don't tell mum. <laughs> <laughs> no star for you, unfortunately, <laughs> Harley. How did you miss Blow? Sure. Charlie. Yeah. Coke. Yeah. It's easy now, though, isn't it? It's always easy after, mm, after the pressure of Coke. Okay. Mm. I love Radio Guy from the 90s. Blow. <laughs> uh, how did you miss that one, uh, Charlie? All <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Toyota is facing a $2 billion lawsuit for having faulty diesel filters. Die. you have 12 seconds to name seven types of Toyota. Go. Starlet, Corolla, Subaru, Subaru, <laughs> Starlet, Corolla, um, Chennai, uh, Banana. <laughs> uh, God, you just got to keep riffing. Um, Corolla, Banu, uh, the uh, the Toyota Bazang, the bzz, the Toyota bzz, the Toyota uh, bzz, uh, Bonanza, uh, Toyota Bonanza, the Corolla, the Toyota. No star, but very entertaining. <laughs> what, uh, how many do you reckon I got? I, well, weirdly, you I got think... got Corolla five times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Oh, All right, this shit. week, the new Kiwi film Nude Tuesday was released in cinemas. Angela, you've got 12 seconds to name eight nude body parts. Go. Um, breasts, that's two. Um, <laughs> buttocks, I think that's two. Thighs, um, armpits, um, vulva. It's all two. They're all two um, parts, too. Uh, lips. That's four. <laughs> I think I'm going to pay it. Well done. Well done. Oh. All right. OK, let's go to the star chart and see tonight's winner. There it is. Congratulations, Team Two. Yeah. Stay safe. That was Seven Days Tonight. Please join me in thanking our panellists this week. Di, Lana, Harley, Madeline, Angela and Ben. We'll see you in Seven Days on Seven Days. Good night. New Zealand there. Thanks for the blow. <laughs> <laughs>